I know, I'm a bit late to the party to put out a, a video, um, but I have been at work all day, so you'll have to forgive me for, for being late to it and uh, not being able to bring you the breaking news and so on. Um, so I'm just going to talk about it from a, from a personal perspective. Um, so the big news is Nuno is no more. We said it from the start. And, uh, and I think some, some real questions need to be asked about this thing altogether, right? So number one, who chose him as the manager? And why did they choose him as the manager? Because if you're going to lose the manager four months into his reign, then surely the people that are looking at his CV, t interviewing him, talking to his representatives... Um, understanding his footballing ethos and, and all the rest of it surely those guys have got to have a good look at themselves in a the mirror and go you know what we totally messed that up there because this has just been four months of torture you know it set the club back no end you can see that right so the fans have been um, annoyed for a while in terms of Levy and Lewis and, and, and the spend and the lack of investment and all that kind of stuff. And um, that manifested itself into a, into a dislike um, of the manager. And the manager's paid the price. But the reality is, you know, he's just another one in our long list of managers that, that um, Enoch have brought in that have just not been good enough to do the job. Not been, you know, um, clued up enough or, or whatever... Um, to, to be the right person for it because they're bringing in people that that will probably say the right things probably be prepared to do what Levy wants but what Levy wants just doesn't work you know we, we're you know we're, we're we, we don't buy well you know we have been investing you know you I know a lot of people say oh we're not investing we are investing just not investing very well, you know, because the players we buy, we, we're planning on buying players to sell on or buying players to grow into, into something special. We're not actually buying the best players that are available in the best positions to build the best team that you, that you possibly can because that's expensive, right? So we don't do that. So then you get a manager that says, if you take Mourinho, you take Mourinho, who's probably in Levy's ears going... Pochettino's not getting a tune out of these players. I could do I could do that job. I could do better than that. I bet you I could get these players playing. These are a good bunch of players. And he said it himself. Great team, you know, we don't need much investment. Gets out there on the training pitch, starts working with them, and then realises actually some of them ain't as good as you think they are. They've got a bad attitude or they're not quite what he expected or they've reached their full potential and they're not going to get any higher or whatever it might be. And so... He then says, sorry, Danny boy, you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket. And Daniel says, sorry, mate, you've got to get top four. Forget about, forget about winning a cup. Not interested in that. You've got to get top four because that's what gets us the money. That's what brings in the money, son. That's what we're after. And uh, Mourinho says, this is your problem. You know, you don't, want, you don't want trophies. You don't want success. You want money. And that's the problem with the club. So Daniel says, see you later. Off you pop. And then 75 days we go, no manager whatsoever because nobody wants to do what Daniel wants them to do. And so therefore you end up with a yes man like Nuno who comes in and says, yes boss, I can get a tune out of these players. Of course I can. Just need to tighten it up. I've got the defensive nails to do it, blah, blah, blah. And Daniel says, you'll do for me. So in he comes and uh, the rest, as they say, is pretty much history. We sit there with... Uh, um, one decent performance against against Man City and then lucky performances against Watford um, and uh, the other one which slips my mind for the moment um, and then we go on our losing streak get an odd win there against Villa and Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt everything's rosy in the garden until we uh, come up against West Ham and uh, and um, Man United and then we're back to square one again and then the fans are singing you don't know what you're doing and uh, we want Levy out whilst uh, drinking our beer in the in the bars and lining his pockets so 
you know, I, I, yeah, it, to a certain extent, I, I think it's a shame. I feel for Nuno. You know, the guy is not a bad guy, and I'm sure he had all the intentions of making us proud, right? But he clearly didn't have the tools. That he clearly didn't have the have the um, management ability to do anything with the attitude of the players because the attitude still seems to sink, uh, stink. The um, he didn't have a plan B. He didn't. He couldn't change anything. He just made like for like um, substitutions if he made a substitution, and he appeared, to be fair, totally out of his depth. Now I'm not a professional manager. Uh, football manager so uh, far be it for me to talk tactics or any of that stuff but I'm looking at it and I can see it going wrong I can see there's no creativity I can see that that we're getting overrun and so on and so forth so if I can see it and I'm not a professional then surely he can but then if you don't do anything about it you're gonna pay the price aren't you so moving on to the next question is who comes next and everybody's jumping up and down saying uh, Conte's come in and so on and so forth. And if that's the case, that's the case. I'll, I'll support him as I did with Nuno. I'll support him. I'll give him my support and all the rest of it. But, again, the question's got to be asked, why did we go for Nuno then? Because Conte was available. So, if the reports at that time were true that he uh, wasn't impressed with the, with the Tottenham plan or the expectation, has something now changed? Has uh, Conte um, softened his approach or have Tottenham softened their approach? Because that's going to be the interesting thing because if it's based on Tottenham, uh, Conte um, softening his approach, then we could just be in the same world of pain with the same players um, causing, the, causing another manager a problem because they're not good enough or they've got the wrong attitude or, or whatever it might be. And Conte doesn't strike me as the sort of guy who's going to put up with that. So, what do you do with that? So you, you ship those players out and you get new players in, but you need you need Enoch on your side for that. So there's lots of questions for me in all of this, and I'm not convinced until until I see it absolutely confirmed, and it may well be being confirmed whilst I'm driving home from work. But until I see it that it's confirmed that he's the manager, then. In my head, I'm still looking at Ryan Mason for the rest of the season, you know, because, you know, he's, he's our go-to guy now. You know, he's our, he's our Peter Shreves, he's our, he's our David Pleat, isn't he? I mean, he's the guy who's going to just keep it ticking over because, it, you know, you've got to hope that, that Enoch and that Levy, Paratici and all that have got a plan because we can't go another 75 days without a manager. Surely. And we can't afford to dilly-dally around in this situation. Because, make no mistake, we have a few more losses. We could be in bang in trouble. Bang in trouble. And, you know, there's been bigger sides than us go down, you know, or get into a relegation scrap and all the rest of it. You know, bearing in mind, you know, where, where Pochettino had built us to and our, in terms of our expectation... We're now in a very different place, very different place. So it's going to be interesting. So, you know, as I say, sad for Nuno. I feel for the guy because he's a nice guy and I'm sure that um, he's, he didn't intend to do a bad job. Um, I'm sure he'll take uh, comfort in his, in his payout because I'm sure he'll have got one. Um, not that he probably needs one because he's probably minted anyway having been a professional footballer and being a, uh, a manager so I'm sure it's not uh, not the end of the world for him um, but you know at the same time you know I want my club to be successful the, the thing here now is Enoch Levy Paratici they've now got to step up to the plate and do something because if they don't if they don't do something, who knows where we're going to end up? And are we going to end up with the same old situation, but just with a, a bigger manager? I don't know. So it'll be interesting. Will Conte come in? Will it be Ryan Mason? Will it be someone else? I don't know. It's desperate times. It's desperate times as a Spurs fan. And, uh, you know, there was I was at the game on, on Saturday and there was audible booing. There was chance of you don't know what you're doing. There was chance of Levy out. Um, and that 
is growing. That sentiment is growing. Um, I, I, you know, that had absolutely no <laughs> effect on the on the um, decision to to release Nuno. I'm sure. Um, I suspect that they were just as fed up watching that crap football as the rest of us, and knew they needed to do something. But whether that something is pre-planned, only time will tell. So if by the time I get home there's an announcement that Antonio Conte's in, and uh, and he says, "Yeah, we're going to spend some money," then then it might be worth um, you know getting a little bit excited again. I can see already from our WhatsApp groups the excitement growing and people saying, oh yeah, I'll, I'll come to that game now. Whereas I've had a lot of people saying they didn't want to go to the games um, and now looking for tickets to go to it. So that's already a bounce. Uh, but that's before we know the manager's going to be, right? So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting, absolutely interesting. There's never a dull moment being a Spurs fan, is there? Like I've said before, and I'll say it again, doing it the hard way since 1882. But, and I've said this before many times, we are addicts, you know, we are addicts to this club. We love it more than anybody else. We love it more than the, ma- the manager, more than the owner, more than the players. You know, we are invested. And that's why we do what we do, because we're invested. Anyway, time will tell. Interesting days to come. Um, and uh, if I uh, if I get a feeling or an opinion on something, then surely you'll hear from me again. But in the meantime, up the Spurs. <laughs>